Hello and welcome back to our KSP career with me. This is, will be an exciting episode. Yes, the craft you're looking at is the E Atmospheric Lander with one and one task alone. Get through the Eve's thick atmosphere and eventually land or splash. I have no idea where it's going to go, but it will be the first intended object landing on Eve. There we go. And I'm actually going to queue a lot of science as it goes through the Eve's thick atmosphere to get as much data points as possible. In the previous episode, we have lovingly deployed the relay satellite that will be relaying the data from this little lander further and back to Kerbin and hopefully netting us a great deal of science. So, as you can see, we have just the right amount of Delta V to be able to, you know, deorbit. I'm gonna aim for the periapsis around 70-ish kilometers, see, 69,932, but who's counting? And I'm gonna set the computer to be pointing always retrograde. With that being said, I'm gonna kick all the science experiments because I do expect when we get to the Eve's atmosphere a loss of signal. So I want all the experiments to be running then, regardless of the fact that we will or will not have connectivity. They should in theory, according to Kerbalism at least, still store valuable data for the experiments and once we re-establish the connection, they will be sending it onwards. So, uh, gravity scan actually has a lot of big data chunks, so I've stopped it from execution. And uh, we have detached, exposing our heat shield. We are folding the solar panels and the uh, antennas, which means for us it's a temporary loss of signal. We will be reopening them once again when it's safe. All right, we are hitting the atmosphere and, and we can confirm the timeout in terms of connectivity. The computer is holding the uh, orbit retrograde, pointing that big shield into the thick of the Eve's atmosphere. I cannot imagine what that heat shield is going through, but it must be brutal. Because Eve's atmosphere is much thicker than Kerbin's or Duna's or whatever. It is the thickest atmosphere in the game. So, there you go. It looks like it's going reliably and I have just hope that I have packed a sufficient enough amount of ablator to be able to withstand the heats of re-entry and you can see it's a race between the ab ablator consumption and the orbital velocity. I just hope that the orbital velocity will be consumed first rather than the ablator because if that happens you know what happens. Boom! Right. So apparently we are down to half a blader and two-thirds of the velocity however we are descending into the thicker layers of atmosphere and i have accelerated this oh good the ablator survived great i think it's time to detach it and get rid of this heat shield because i don't want to be landing with a heat shield once we get into the thicker layers of the atmosphere and for your convenience, this was actually much slower. I have decided to accelerate time. There we go. And I have decided to, you know, activate the drogue parachutes in an attempt to slow down the velocity of the drop as much as possible, which of course means it will take a longer time to drop. But if we drop below, I think it was 10 meters per second, that means I can actually re-enable the communication and the solar panels because the drag from the atmosphere will be low enough so it doesn't rip off all the important you know experiments and well not the experiments but you know the relays and the, the antennas and the solar panels yes so we are dropping slowly but surely through the thick of the atmosphere i'm just making sure that everything looks good deploy shoot. I have actually recalibrated the shoot to deploy around 2000 meters so that it gives us some time in the E's atmosphere to collect the data from the science experiments when we're going through the Eve's atmosphere. Right. Perfect. So there they are, the thick clouds of Eve. Now the Eve's atmosphere with this, I mean, this I think is uh, the stock visual enhancements, it's beautiful. 
I really enjoy it and it really looks amazing. Look at this. I mean, it really does convey the feeling of going through the atmosphere of an entirely another planet. I've also accelerated time, I think it's eight times together, four in the game and four again in the video recording because I didn't want you to sit here and wait for another 10 minutes until we land. However, it's going to take a little bit of time. We are pa passing the 6,000 meters mark. However, our velocity is not dropping as fast as I would like it because until we get to the 10 meters per second, I really cannot deploy the, uh, the solar panels or the antennas. So let's just say for the sake of the gameplay, we do have a t velocity indicator. Oh, there we go. Oh, and we will be landing in the Explodium Sea. Okay, I didn't plan. I was hoping for a dry land, but yeah, I'll take what I can get. There we go. The parachute did deploy. We are going at two meters per second, which means I can deploy everything. And why don't we have any connection? Okay, connection in progress. No, timeout. Okay, uh, DSN connected, no strength, no. I'm now confused. Did I miss anything? Uh, I will disable the SAS and re enable it. Let's just check. Oh, now I understand. Well, simply put there is no relay inside the relay is obscured by the planet's atmosphere okay so if i accelerate a little bit we should hopefully regain connection soon enough okay well that, that that wasn't part of the plan but hopefully it will still be okay because once this uh, main relay comes into ah there we go we have connectivity woohoo great which means our science experiments have already collected the amount of data and they're sending it off back to Kerbin. Beautiful, which means we will be getting a lot of science back to Kerbin. That's amazing. All right, so radiation scan transmitted. And it's good that we have two antennas because they combine the actual velocity or the data transfer rate. So as you can see, we are sending now the telemetry report which will be followed by the pressure and all that jazz. There you go, telemetry report on EVE. And once all of those experiments have been <coughs> successfully done, I will deploy others. Atmospheric pressure and gravity scan from EVE space low. That will actually help advance our scientific program. And I was actually thinking to go towards a little bit bigger rockets because right now we are limited by 2.5 meter fairing and I do want to eventually go to the bigger rockets rather bigger than Falcon 9 and you guess which one it's gonna be for the people that know you know SpaceX or not um, the Tundra it's gonna be Gojira yes so I cannot wait till I research that stuff oh the solar panels were broken by aero forces and the antenna broken oh shoot However, we are low enough that the, uh, we still have the connectivity to the, to the satellite. So I think all in all, we're good. W however, the problem will be battery. Eventually it's going to run out of battery. And when it runs out of battery, well, we will have nothing more to report. All right. Atmospheric pressure scan. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Let's stop these to ensure that all of the data being sent from the collected experiments is being sent. Gravity, gravity scan has megabytes and megabytes of data, so I'm actually triggering that one last. That's a harsh lesson I've learned in, you know, KSP. There we go, our uh, relay went once again behind the horizon. And I don't know why the small satellites are not relaying the information, that's kind of weird. because I was kind of relying on them. That might prove to be a problem-ish. We'll see when it comes to Duna, because on Duna I've been relying on a lot of small satellites to relay the data, but we'll see. However, one more update is we have a contract for the sciences from the surface of Gilly, and I thought as an extra added bonus to this episode, to show that our little Gilly scientific 
Lander has been actually collecting diligently a lot of data, so we will be transferring and recovering scientific data from the surface of Gilly. That contract is gonna give us... Ooh! Um, yeah, apparently Gilly has so low, you know, gravity that once I've actually stopped the physics or re-enabled the physics, it just jumped up. So we're gonna call this the Gilly Hopper. Alright, so... Let's go into data, look at that. Sadly, the mystery goo we will not be able to retrieve because you actually have to physically retrieve those. I was hoping that you could actually send at least some data. But yeah, apparently not. So I'm actually thinking on disabling... Oh, stop jumping, will ya? I'm trying to talk here. All right. Anyway, hopefully it will be quiet now and uh, we don't we have a timeout because of the solar storm that you can see however yeah once the solar storm has passed in 57 minutes we will re-establish the connection there we go solar storm is gone and once again we are sending the data uh we should be sending the data oh it's sending the gravity scan which is being researched oh i i get it so I actually have to stop the experiment from executing, from gathering more data, and then it will send everything it has, because the data capacity, we are at zero available percent, so that's why it's halted. So let's stop this one from running. And look at this now. Yeah, now we're sending the seismic data, seismic scan and everything. So, good. That means that all of the scientific data is going to be sent, and eventually we will be able to gather more. So I'm just going to time accelerate a little bit until we send all the necessary data. And look at this, 866 science. That's amazing. And the Gilly Rolander is actually still collecting the data because I told it to run some other experiments. However, we will finish this episode by going to this small probe and thanking it for all the wonderful science it has given us. And for you guys, do boop the like button, it helps me out a great deal, and I'll see you in my next episode. Thanks for watching.